Hi. 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 How's your day today? Or should we introduce ourselves to the people out there? How's your day today? It was great. How was your day today? How's it going, guys? This is our first time ever, mm -hmm. ever having a conversation with each other, videotaping our our conversation about some weird things that Eric has no idea about. No idea. Like I don't even know when to look at the camera. Mm -hmm. but like, I don't no. either. And by the way, I am Eric. I this am is Bree's my husband, Eric. Husband. I'm Bree. And this is Bree, who you've been listening to for the past month. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is End Times Now with Bree. I'm Bree. You're Bree. It's weird. Um, and I we just thought it would be kind of cool just to, like, have these little conversations and just see, you know, just be normal. It's more of a freestyle, right. Just be normal. Because one of the things is that um, I have severe ADD, if you haven't noticed. She says that multiple times in episode. And uh, so it's, it's, it's hard to come up with an episode because I, I have to write an entire transcript. Otherwise, I see sparkly things and go off into the distance. So for all of you that don't know, it is a 27 to 30 page dissertation that she reads from when she gives you these podcasts two or three times a week. So this is more of an off the cuff, uh, kind of the real yeah. behind the yeah. 10 times with Brie, but here we are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, the first thing I wanted to, to talk about real quick was um, there was a question that came in from a girl in Australia. Her name is Robin. Okay. She goes by Rob. And um, what's up, Rob? And she wanted to know if going to church was essential in having a relationship with God. Uh, because she grew, well, she didn't, I don't know, she, I can't remember, I'm really sorry if she grew up in a church or not, but I know that she went for a while, but then she was hurt by the church. And so um, she quit going. Okay. And so what, what do you think the answer to that is? Well, I have. You think it's essential? Uh, well, I, again, now these questions are not prepped. I was not told what she's going to ask me. So this is thoroughly off the cuff. So do I think it's essential? Uh, for certain things, yes, because in the Bible, it does say that we need to congregate together, right? So whether that means in a physical form in a church, whether that means through a group online, whether that means through a means of getting together on a, on a, on a regular basis, I don't know that full answer. I know that. I don't believe that you have to go to church to be a good Christian. I know that much. Where is there such thing as a good Christian? Well, no, the answer is no. So I don't think you have to go to church to have that relationship with God. But I do believe that the Bible says that congregating, singing songs for him and things of that nature are what he wants. He wants that community to be together. So I fight whether that's through a church because sometimes a church and religion is man-made. So it's like, oh, this guy says you should come to my church because of this. I have a hard time saying that's the reason I should congregate. But if it's through a podcast and we have a forum of people that get together weekly or biweekly or monthly, is that the same? I don't know the answer. Mm. So uh, I think there are benefits, yes, of going to church. And I think that people need to go to church if they feel the need to go to church. Right? It's there for a reason. But I'm not sure I believe that it's necessary as part of your spiritual walk. So um, here's here's. Here's my answer, and that is that uh, a lot of what you just said, I agree with, right? So most people will use the the um, the verse in Hebrews, Hebrews uh, chapter ten, verse twenty five, about not forsaking, not forsaking the assembly. Right. Um, it actually says uh, just to be complete about it it says um bear with me here guys because this is this, this is where the separate side computer comes in so that the factual information this is important remains factual correct yes this is important right. i had a whole thing of notes here but my thing's not working all right you saw me type that in right eric you saw me no i'm actually looking at the camera so that our viewers can watch me because you're so you good looking thank you you're such a good looking man all right. 
So this is what it says, guys. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Let me, let me do this. That was the King James Version. Yes. Um, okay. So, not neglecting to meet together. This is the English Standard Version. Uh, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, here's the thing. I am a very literal person when it comes to the Bible. You know that, right? And so, I see a couple of things here, Rob, that um, it simply states that we should not neglect to meet with each other. Uh, instead, we should encourage one another all the more as you see the day is drawing near. Well, the day is today. Okay, the day that we are living in today is the age of deceit. Yes. So in Proverbs, it talks about how uh, iron sharpens iron, right? Which means that iron sharpens iron as a man sharpens another. Our friends that we surround ourselves with sharpen each other. Correct. Okay. That's why I take it. And iron is used as what? What could be used as a weapon. A weapon. I love you. We did not rehearse this, by the no. way. Um, and I've never spoken to you about this before. Not a bit. So, um, so yes, it can be used as a weapon and a tool, right? So I think that when people use the Hebrews 10.25, you know, do not forsake the assembly, um, as the word that says you need to go to church, I think it's utter hogwash. Now, Rob, how I take it, again, as I'm reading it for the first time, right, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. So what that means is the encouragement is the most important part, but there is an importance of not neglecting to get together. Now, whether that means for you, it means a weekly church. Others, it may be a just a spiritual group that you talk to and have a commonality with people. I think that the meeting together is important, but the encouragement is the most important part that I take from it. I have a question. Mm-hmm. What about um, what about if you feel like you don't fit into a church in particular? And the reason why I'm asking that is because I feel like I don't fit into a church. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally feel like the bigger churches have gotten these days. Now, granted, listen, I'm not saying that you should not go to church. No, okay. I'm I am not no. saying that at all. What I'm saying is that uh, church was intended initially to be a safe space where people could go and worship and pray and praise God without getting their heads chopped off. Um, it was a place that they could go where they could teach each other things and learn from each other, right? Right. So, uh, those... like to me, how I take it is not neglecting to meet together, Rob, could be something as simple as this talking about spirituality with someone that you know, right? That you learn from, because it says, I'm as Brie is literal, not neglecting to meet together, right? So it means don't neglect that. Well, but encouraging one another. Okay, but wait. So, what I was saying though is that. People nowadays, they look at church as, you know, they go to, you know, they go to to worship and learn and whatever. But from what I have witnessed, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of people getting hurt in the church. And that comes from, and I'm really sorry to any pastors out there, uh, I really feel like that comes from bad leadership. Because you should know your flock. Mm -hmm. You should know every single one of your sheep. You should know them by name. You should know them by heart. You should know them. And if you see something going on in the church that's not good, that is hurting someone, you should nip that instantly as the flock leader. Now, that being said, too, worshiping comes in different many ways. Yep. I go outside and I look outside and I think, oh, Lord, you gave me one more day to breathe. Thank mm-hmm. you. Okay, he says, lift your hands in praise. 
he doesn't say we just have to do it by songs. Right. He said we can clang together symbols if we yep. wanted to. And for others, it is through the music. Exactly. Right? We have gone to many churches. And for me, music is what hits me mm-hmm. a lot. Right. That praise and worship that, to that's me is, ministry a, is, a, for is you. a big thing. That's the how I get a lot of my conversation with God is through the music. Right. The music hits me and I go into my place and I think. Not that I'm not listening to the pastor because you know, or the preacher because it's important. But for me, that music is really what gets me going. So, mm-hmm. you know, not that we're talking just to Rob, but Rob, I think one of the questions you have is, oh, this is to? many people but, have this question. But Rob, you know, if it hits home, keep going, right? We've been to churches sometimes for a year, sometimes once or twice because it didn't feel right. So I guess my answer to your question would be, do what feels right. It says to gather, but the most important part is encourage one another mm-hmm. first and foremost. Well, so I I sent you I sent Rob I replied to your email, and um, just for the rest of you out there that might also be having this question, uh, if you have this question, that means that you're you're obviously seeking truth, which is really a good indication that God's ready to like rank you up a little bit there, um, which can come with a couple of things, and so. Um, the first thing I would say is that everything that you do, do it with God in mind, even if it's cleaning a toilet. Because if you do that, then you are going to find that not only are you going to do the best job at even just cleaning the toilet, but it changes your mind and it changes your, your, it just changes your whole chemistry. <clears throat> into more of a worship attitude and a praise attitude, which is really what he deserves to begin with, because he's the reason we're sitting here breathing right now. But um, but here's the other thing. If that's the case, and if you guys, you know, are taking that step, you need to be prepared for some shrapnel. You need to be prepared for some spiritual warfare. And so if that's the case, which it is, because we're, that's what we do. We're warriors, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Then you need to make sure you have people surrounding you that can help sharpen you. Yep. And so in order to have that, you have to ask for that. And so if you're an introvert, uh, you know, like me. For real. uh, um, I don't even remember what I was saying. I I got it. Robert. I got it. Anyway. Okay. So what I'm saying, hold on. So what I was saying though, is that you got to ask God for that. Yeah. Right. And you know, Rob, what I'll throw out there is, and then we're going to, because I want to know the next question. Where, oh yeah. If you're questioning whether you need to go to church, mm-hmm. I would ask you, is it the right church? Because if you're asking that question, are you being fulfilled in the place you're going currently? Or do you no, feel that? No, she doesn't go to church. She's asking. Oh, she's she been told. Has, does she know? Do you have to go? Yeah, because, because she was okay. hurt by the church, which pisses me off, by the way. Okay, because that goes on way too much. But here's the other thing. The Bible says, the Bible says that there will be wolves among you. They're going to sit at your, at your table. They're going to eat with you and they're going to act like they're something. Okay, but they're not going to be good for you. Well, here's so, what I'll do then. I'll finish this up and then I want to go next question. Okay, cool. well, no, I'm in charge. You have ADD. I'm if in you charge. want this to be No, I'm in charge. Oh boy. I'm in charge. You don't have the questions. I have the questions. She doesn't have the questions. I do the have the questions. They're all right here. Right. And it's not blank. It's all it's my screen. So Rob, what you're I my say, guest. if you're looking to go to church, look at what we just talked about, whether it be the music that hits home, whether it be the preacher and the message, find what hits you personally and go from there. Well, and go into it with an open mind, right? Ask for it. Ask for it. Go in with that open mind. And go, here's why I'm coming today. Yeah. Not because of preconceived notions. And that would be my advice to you. Yeah. Good advice. Cool. Off yeah. the cuff. All right. So um, real quick, just to go over a couple things. So obviously this is new. I don't know how we're going to do this. We might do it on Rumble. We might do it on YouTube. Probably not, though, YouTube, because I think that they might take us down because we're talking about God. The big G. The big G. That's it, right? Yeah, big they, G. They don't like that. Yeah. But um, but regardless of anything, you guys, and I'll put all the links down in there, you know, but if you have any questions 
or concerns or thoughts, or maybe you have a really cool story to tell because it's a lot easier to have a conversation with someone than to write a 30 page dissertation. Right. And because if you guys call in or want to call in, like, hey, I, don't I have a story. Calls. I don't know how to do that. Well, not yet. What I'm saying is you can have a story. To tell. You can find a way to do a live podcast where it's just you and Brie having a conversation just like we are. Yeah. And it's not going to be video recorded, obviously. So you can just. I mean, you could. You know, I know well, Skype does it, right? You or you can just talk, right? So, yeah. you know, we want to make sure these podcasts are going to be what's going to hit home for everybody. To a broad audience. Well, so. it's not going to hit home for for everyone. There's going to well, be angry people too. That's so, okay, and that's okay. Because the message is not. I'm not. Gonna I'm not sugarcoating. No. I'm not going to sit in front of a camera and put makeup on and tell you a story. Right. I'm wearing my five dollar Coles T-shirt. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, Colorado Mountains. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, okay. So uh, end times now with Bree at protonmail.com is the email, and then you can find me on all the social media under that uh, name as well. <laughs> Okay. Spreaker, okay. Facebook, Spotify. Yes. 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 By the way, if you guys go to Spreaker, it really helps me out more. So just letting you know. Um, guess what? What? So speaking of Rumble, um, <laughs> hi, Moses, our puppy Moses. Hi, Moses. Um, Rumble. <laughs> Moses, yeah, wait, wait, can you see? <laughs> Moses, get down, get down. <laughs> okay, so Rumble went through a, um, thank you. Uh, they had a cyber attack on over the weekend, and it had to do with um, Chris Pavlovsky, who is the owner of Rumble. Uh, Rumble is a free speech platform. I know nothing about Rumble. I'm explaining it to you because I, I know that you don't know anything about it. But uh, It's a free speech platform where people can go and upload videos and stuff like that. And what ended up happening was some things about January 6th came out that were pretty significant. And so there was a breach in the system and it got hacked. And there was... Um, this quote unquote cyber attack. Okay. So my question to you, and it was the only, it, it didn't happen anywhere else. It just happened on rumble. Um, I think January 6th, like years ago, January 6th, the, the insurrection. Okay. That, that was a long time ago, but go ahead. Do you know about that? Do you know anything about that? Is that when the people invaded, like, you know, when Trump was president, they're like, we're going to come breach the White House. Yay. Yes. Do yep. you know, do you know actually what happened with that? Um, I Not that I can speak of with any factual information. No. What do you think? That okay. people made up a bunch of stuff that wasn't true to sit there and go, look at, he's a bad man. Okay. You're a very smart man. All right. So, yes. So that's a definition of misinformation. Yes. That's a true word. Misinformation for real. <laughs> it's being put out there a lot. It is. Mm -hmm. It lot. is. Okay. And so that's so a dash lot, not like a lot, like a parking lot, like a dash lot. Like that's no. not actually how you spell that. I know. <laughs> but go ahead. Okay. That was my squirrel. Okay. <laughs> so um yes. So they they you know have found out like all this stuff and we knew this beforehand. And you guys, I'm really sorry if there's anybody out there that feels like that was you know actually a thing that Trump incited it you know it wasn't um, and there's too much evidence out that says that that's that's that was just not the case um but you know that being said okay, I mean, so. what do we always say right we're citizens of heaven mm -hmm. that and how much does that make people angry when they're like are you a democrat or a republican and we're like well we're yeah. monarchists i'm a minor i'm a monarchist well because if they believe in one i believe in one it's a monarchy. Uh, I'm a monarchist. Uh, I have a king, right? And I'm a citizen of heaven. And people hate that. But let me tell you um, why why that is. Because in Romans chapter 13, which you're reading Romans now, right? No, I'm in between. I'm in I'm on Acts. Oh, 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 okay. Well, in Romans chapter 13, it talks about how uh, the government is placed by God. All the leaders of all the nations are placed by God. I've heard you talk about that. Oh, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, we don't necessarily have to agree 
with the people that are placed, right? But we have to respect yes. God's decision. Yep. So talking trash. We have to respect their authority because God put them there. Right. Whether or not we like that. Right. We have we to have respect to. it. And why? Look, at God said so. Okay, that's, but, that's really, but why? Because it's supposed to happen. All the things that are happening were God knows and said the reason why it's going to happen. Some usher things in. Others allow things to happen because the book's been written and this is just part of the story. To get us home, right? Well, that's the ultimate goal. To get us home. Yeah. And and so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, how many? So everyone is placed, right? Every leader. Every leader. So that includes Hitler. I believe so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's going to include uh, the Antichrist too, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Not, don't have the factual like information, but I believe so. Pe- people don't like to. Hear if we that. have to believe that every leader was placed because it said so, whether or not we like it, we don't get to pick and choose. Right. Right. Just because you go, I don't like this person's thought process. Well, either do I. And we're human beings and we have those discussions. Right. But ultimately, there's a reason why those people are placed. And, you know, when people talk about hindsight is 2020, it's so easy to look back and go, oh, now I get it. I get it. But in the moment, it's so hard to understand why someone goes. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Make no sense. Why right? do we have a talking puppet? Right. Puppet head. It makes no <laughs> sense. But years later, you realize that had to happen for what's happening now to take place. Right. So that's my thought process. So, so here's. So let's watch January. 6th. So now listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tie this all together now. Okay. I'm trying guys to keep it. In okay. Up. So listen, so, um, you know, cyber attack, uh, apparently Obama did a film about how we were going to have a, there, you know, the potential for a cyber attack is very, real and it would cause like an amp and you guys i haven't seen this so don't you know mark my words on this this is just very like new information for me and i just am going kind of off the cuff here right the word you say it's conjecture you use that a lot i like the word conjecture so this is such a good word right we're now conjecturing total conjecturing happening okay anyways but he you know he is like doing this film or whatever, talking about cyber attack and how it could throw us into an EMP and you know what would happen then, right? If we had an EMP, lose their mind within twenty four hours. Twenty four hours is all it would take, you guys. All okay. right. So here's the thing. Um, back in 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 2020, uh, the World Economic Forum. Have you heard me talk about them? I have heard you talk about them a lot. Okay. So do you know who Klaus Schwab is? Yep. I He's call him. He said that you will have nothing and you'll all be so happy. Yeah, Something you will like own that, nothing right? and you will be happy. Okay. I call him Darth Schwaber or <laughs> Count Schwabula. <laughs> if you ever look at it, have you ever seen what he looks like? Ah, he looks <laughs> like a Count Schwabula. And then when he talks, he sounds like a Count Schwabula. That's all anyway. out there now. He is the Count Schwabula. Anyways, he said. Congress. So he said back in 2000. Now, do, do you remember Event 201? Yes, that's like the Bill Gates thing. Uh, I paired up there, and uh, I vaguely, yeah, I, I don't want to say I vaguely, but I vaguely remember the topic. But if you remind me, I'll say absolutely. So Event 201 happened. Uh, the World Economic Forum. That's when they talked about how COVID was something. They're going to have this. They're going to release this thing that basically wasn't called COVID. But it's exactly what well. No, it was a coronavirus. Okay, coronavirus. They went through this thing, this like uh, this hypothetical scenario right. years before. No, months. Months. Okay, see, so that's where. Okay, she's the expert. And and in so, it was funded by uh, the Department of Defense, the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, of course, John Hopkins, which the Rockefellers own everything. Um, and uh, some Chinese companies in there that acted like they cared about health. So I'm trying to roll this into the rumble you're Anyways, talking about. So listen. Okay. So For um, viewing audience out there. They're good. They're good. So um, basically, he, you know, went during that, that era, Event 201. So that proceeded, and then all of a sudden, Event 201 proceeded. They did this hypothetical thing, and then next thing you know, oh, here comes COVID. 2020, yep. Okay. Well, here's what he also said, was that there will be a <laughs> cyber attack. 
Okay, so he announced that Becca, 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 right back in the event two hundred one time frame. Two thousand twenty. Okay. Okay. Now we have Obama, who and this is recent. Yes. Okay. Who's coming out talking about cyber attacks? And now we have Rumble. Okay, so um, a lot of people are freaking out about this for obvious reasons because you have. China, who is already doing the social credit system, right? We're going talk about that as well. Yeah, yep. they're already doing it so much so that, like, people have to uh, show their face in order they do uh, the facial recognition scanning if you have to go potty. Like, we're not talking pay the euro to go right. to go to the bathroom in Europe where the the bathroom is is so clean you could eat your dinner. It was scan your face so we know where you're at. This is now King. scan your face so that you can enter the bathroom. And then you have to scan your face again to get toilet paper. Find a plot of land and go to the bathroom there. Except that's going to be impossible because they have camera systems set up all over the place to the point where you can't even jaywalk in China or else they will shame you. They have these like tell us like these television things, it's like billboards, these big, huge. Yeah. Where they'll put the faces of who jaywalked and they'll get shamed and they will take away their certain um, privileges. Like there was a dude that was all happy and excited that he, you know, did all the right things mm -hmm. so that he could finally buy a train ticket on the fast train. And you so now, how do we that. roll this into your question to me about the January 6th and Rumble? Okay, so my my question is, what do you think the next step is? If all of this is happening, okay, what do you think the next step is if they are already cyber attacking? And who do you think is doing it? So if they're already cyber attacking us, well, the next step would be taking away our digital, call it freedoms, right? Whether it's a full EMP, whether it's, um, you know, oh, to access your phone, you must do this. So I don't know the answer, but I think whatever you want to call it, digital freedoms, whether even what we're doing here, right? Finding ways to get messages across the Internet. Um, I think that they'll monitor that. So I think that's my answer without knowing exactly what the answer is. Cool. Um or what the possible answer is. Okay. A lot of people have a question regarding if there were an EMP. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what, like, what would happen? Like, you know, what would it look like if there were an EMP? What would happen if, mm -hmm. if something, you know, there was an attack, a cyber attack, and it took us, it took us off the grid. Um, what do you think would happen next? First thing is grab your Bibles because you'll obviously need that to reference. But no, um, <laughs> if you would because they'll, they'll take that away too. But um, I think within 24 hours that people would go insane. I think within 48 hours people would loot because they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. They would start overthinking things. They would. Hey. I think too many people are so reliant on digital technology that they wouldn't know what to do. Like their alarm clock, like how do I get up for work? How do I go to work? Oh my gosh, my car won't start. What am I, you know, everything that their world would, everything that their world involves would change in an instant. Um, so I think that would be number one. Okay. And then people would resort to. Who do you think would be involved? Who do you think would be the ones actually doing it? Well, I think the government would be the ones doing it and be the ones to go, here's how we're going to usher in the help. Cause so whether it's, Deep state, whether it's the government itself, whether it's who do you think deep state is? I don't know who deep state is. It's people that have more money than the government. So, okay. Do you think that it's just people in the United States? No. Okay. No, I, I, so I, it's I, a world thing. I think deep state is is a underground. Again, it's this kind of conspiracy thing. So, Chad and Sherry on uh, Investigate not Earth. Um, the thing that they talk about. Here's the props for Chad and Sherry because this is kind of like a Chad and Sherry podcast for a brief moment. No, this is no, but, this is. I'm gonna. You just wait, well, but well, go okay. ahead. So, um, I think Deep State is an underground network, for lack of better words, that is tied together worldwide mm -hmm. with a larger agenda, and that individual governments 
play roles in their agenda. Now, again, I don't know anything. I have no basis on saying this. I don't have any facts to prove They're puppets, it. right? The government. But most governments, I feel, are puppets of the deep state, which means we want them to do this, so we'll act this way. Do I think certain countries have um, greater roles as the puppeteer part? Possibly because they have stronger ties to the deep state, more money, or the deep state says we need to use you in order to get our agenda pushed. So those people become more important players. Now, again, no basis. Do you, that just do you think biblically, okay, because you've read, we've talked about Revelation quite a bit. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you think biblically, biblically that it makes sense for China to... Um, China or Russia or any of the BRICS nations whatsoever to uh, drop a nuclear bomb on us? Will it benefit them? Um, do, do you think it fits biblically? On us? I mean, not really, no. But if they touch Israel, then I guess what? There's a whole other thing that happens there when they say, well, we're going to go attack Israel because it's all written. Right. Which, but if you guys. Us, I, I don't know. I don't know if the U.S. is really in, in the Bible. Interesting. I mean, That's interesting. Um, well, we are a country that is is we have the most Christians in the world, right? Mm -hmm. You see where I'm going with that? I do. Okay. I love it. So, um, so now my next question is, um, if because I, I assume you think that it doesn't make sense that they would throw down a nuclear weapon, right? You don't believe it does. That doesn't fit. It doesn't biblically. fit right now, but obviously, if the agenda changed, it could. It doesn't fit biblically, right? So, um, so if that's the case, now people are kind of freaking out about an EMP. Okay, so if there were an EMP, who do you think would be responsible for it? We know we know deep state would be the ones that are controlling. I think uh, the U.S. would have an EMP before another country, maybe China, because they have the most technology-based things, uh, whether it be cars, everything. Like you said, that what you just talked about in China, you walk down the streets and there's a video of people, you know, that did jaywalk or didn't jaywalk, and they're getting props for it. So you can't get I think, toilet paper. Without. I think the countries that have the technology you need more toilet paper, dude. Because like if you're talking about people in India, they they don't. I mean, have an EMP, they're like. We don't Sweet. care. We don't care, right? <laughs> now, again, that's no knock on your shirt. India is hugely populated. I no, mean, no. I've, have you seen Have you seen all of the, the electrical wires that go through India? No. No. So maybe that was a bad example, but you get it where oh, they countries crazy. that are densely populated and have a high percentage of technological users, mm -hmm. whether it be cars, phones, internet, um, computers, etc., that would be where the EMP would happen first. So any large technologically based company and that makes sense to me whether it's say US or China. Why do you think China's buying so much of our land? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna ask this question one more time and I just okay. want you just to think for just a little Why do you think China's buying so much of our land? So we can't farm it. I don't know the answer. That's, that's a great it. answer. So we can't farm it. That's a great so they answer. can say you get to eat this because mm -hmm. I said so. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. But I don't know the answer to that question. Right. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. I'm asking all these questions because there's a lot of people out there who are freaking out. And the Bible talks about a lot of this stuff. All we really need to know is the timeline, right? All we need to know is the time. No one says it says that no one knows the day or the hour. Right. But you should know the season. But we need to know the season. Right. And then the Bible from knowing the season can really get you real close uh -huh. to the day and the hour. You don't know really exactly, close. but it'll get you real close if you really know the season. Close. So we need to pay attention to the signs that are bringing us towards the season. Yes. That um, wasn't scripted either, I promise you. No. No. Jesus, Jesus was mad at, he, well, he, he, was, he was devastated. Uh, when he stood at the top of the hill and he was looking down at, at, at Jerusalem and he was um, he was weeping because they missed him. They they missed their Messiah, okay. the Jews. Okay. They missed their Messiah. I, I knew. Do, do, no, for the audience. The Italians, the, the Italians, Jesus went to go visit. 
brought. For some people who don't know that the Jews and Gentiles are different, they may think they are all people, right? We have a large audience out there. So the they, story. missing him when he stood in the top of right. the mountain, means the people, the Jews, the that Jews he said, system. you should know who I am. Well, they and, and, he, and he said that because literally Daniel, the 70 weeks prophecy, mm-hmm. right, uh, it says it to the day when he would be coming. And they missed it. And so I'm saying that because here we have all of this information. We have all of these prophecies. We have all of this stuff. And we should get really close, I think, to uh, be able to to tell, like, when things are going to happen down to, like, you know, peace treaties. And it doesn't actually say peace treaty, but... Peaceful times, for lack of a better word. When they call peace. Mm -hmm. And so um, the other thing is that, you know, the Antichrist will sit on the throne in Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. and that's called the abomination of desolation. And and that actually happened once before, but I believe that this is a double fulfillment, right? It's going to happen again. And the reason why I feel that way is because Jesus, when he talks about this, he... He talks about it in the end of days. Right. Did you ask me what, so, what countries I think will be right. part of this, right? In the end of days. Right. Right. So, you know, when Ezekiel uh, 38 happens and all of the surrounding countries, uh, the countries that are surrounding them, China, Russia, okay, all of those guys, um, I there's going to be a couple that just kind of stand stand by and just go, "Mm, you probably shouldn't have done that. Right. I really feel like um, it doesn't fit in the timeline. If China were going to do anything to us, you know, or Russia, were going to do anything to us. It doesn't fit. okay? because we are Israel's ally. Right. Right. Not that in all reality they don't need us because God God's God. But I think our our part's already been written. I do too. Um, but I'm just saying there's a lot of people out there that are freaking out about this. Now, that being said, um I I I do believe that we are headed for very and very rapidly headed for um some kind of a, an attack where they feel like they need to introduce a new system. Do you know what kind of a system that's going to be? Uh, I, if I think she's leading me towards like the chip system, like they uh, well, shipped. Sorry, sort of. Uh, the beast system. Right. Well, the mark. Yeah. The, right. Well, the mark of the beast is different than the beast system. Right. Well, because the mark of the beast says he's the, the one, the beast has the mark, but then he creates a system based on his mark. Which right? is going to be the economy. Oh, that's the guys. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be, buy or sell, right? We're going to be controlled by someone who says you get this or to buy a you know, loaf of bread is going to cost a day's worth of wages. Something yes. similar to that. For like one a, person. Right. One person to eat a day you work and you get to eat. And that's what that's you it. get. And Klaus Schwab said you'll be happy. Yes. Anyway. And, uh, and, but that fits, doesn't it? It fits. Yes. It fits. You have to literally run to everything. Okay. So. Uh, the B system, you know, what what that looks like is they basically have to know everything about what you're doing, right? I don't I don't know much about the B system. So well, they have to know. Questions. They would have to they, if you can't buy or sell. You can't buy or sell, right? It says that in the Bible. You cannot buy or sell unless you take the mark and you worship the Antichrist or the beast, the image okay. of the beast. Um, and so if that's the case, then you're kind of screwed, right? Or you're going to go under underground. Um, I'm going underground. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyways, um, I'll, I can live in a tree. Can I? I don't know about you. In the words of Breeze Priest, that's for another podcast. Anyway. anyway, so um, my point is, is that we are headed very quickly for this this system, and in order to get there, they have to take us. Off of the current system, which is where this EMP or the Obama conversation says, "Hey, this might happen." So they're prepping us for. They're all prepping this? us, yes, dear. Right. They are prepping us for this, but um, 
And there's some there's some other things involved here, too, like, you know, some people. So the Bible talks about the mark being taken in your hand or in your forehead. Now, this technology has been out for a really long time, since the 80s. An engineer came out and said, you know, he he worked on it. The reason why they chose the forehead was because of temperature. So they could tell your temperature. OK. Um, they have you ever heard me talk about CRISPR-9? Yes. Okay. When I know her talking about CRISPR nine now again, this is like it's it's like a super soldier where well, they're no 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 no. They can use this to create super okay. soldiers. And they already have created. Right. It's like basically super taking soldiers. the best of the best, whether it's from someone's strength or someone's intelligence, and they're using this CRISPR nine technology to put it in people and create a super soldier. So they're the smartest, they're the strongest, the fastest, almost like a superhero. Huh. Is that where you were leading me? Again, not scripted, swear to you. Promise not scripted, but I wouldn't swear to you. Anyway. Who, um, so who else is like that in the Bible? Superheroes like that. I don't know. I mean, there were a lot of superheroes. I mean, Moses was a superhero in my mind. You're so cute. But I, I don't know. Yeah. No. So, no, I don't know. Uh, the Nephilim? Yeah, those are, those are the big people. Yeah, they were talk, big people. You've heard her talk about that. That's from the Watchers and Very women, and they create the Teflum. And yes, so I won't go into that part because you've already heard that. If you have not listened to that podcast, I think it's number two, right? Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. I think so. I don't know. It's about the one that says giants. Yeah, so. giants. Um. Okay. So yes. So as in the days of Noah, Jesus said, "As in the days of Noah, so shall it be, the coming of the Son of Man." Right. Okay. Well. Um. We have CRISPR-9, which basically is gene sequence technology, which I talked about this on the last podcast. So it's gene sequence sequence technology, because I I haven't got to the last podcast yet, because it just came out the other day. Um, So does this relate to the EMP and the control part? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's all relative. Okay. It's all relative. So you have uh, CRISPR-9, and what they do is they can literally, they insert this, this gene uh, mutation into your DNA and that then does its thing and it re-replicates and does all this stuff. Okay. Um, and that's how they're creating super soldiers that can just eat grass and be cool with that. Um, so like Klaus Schwab said, they'll eat grass and be happy. Oh yeah. They want to see bugs. Yeah. The whole bug thing just grosses me out. Oh, by the way, that's already in our food. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Anyway. Um, so, okay. So they have CRISPR-9. They also have this other thing that's not talked about. And I've never heard this, have I? No. Okay. Just so you know, I can tell when she gives me that look, like, I'm going to tell you something you've never heard before. Yeah. And now I'm on video going, sure, I'll respond to it. So. Okay. I'm going to tell you what it is so that you know. Okay. Okay. Because now you know what CRISPR-9 is. Gene mutation. Yeah. Okay, so they also have this other thing, and it's called op- optogenetics. And optogenetics is basically um, how they can, it's, it's nanotechnology that they can use light uh, to, in, in your brain um, to, to respond to light and, like, make you do things and stuff. Um, and they are touting it as like, um, can heal people and do these kinds of things. Um, and so I'm saying that to say this, that between this thing, the optogenetics Mm -hmm. that they've literally put into, they've already put this into these, these little, they're robots. They're the freaky looking robots on four legs. They're called mm-hmm. tra- quadruples, is what they're called, and um, they are able to map out spatial uh, environment and like what they they can see what they can see. These robots can see. Yeah. Okay. So, which normally isn't an issue. This thing is but AI, right? right? And we're able to see, and yeah, people drones, are going to be able to things, see. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but this is different, okay? Because they are able to introduce it via virus 
And what it does is it attaches itself to everything and rides on the back of gene mutation and it goes into your brain. It, it crosses the, it's, it's covered with gold so it can cross the blood brain barrier and then re tool your brain to your brain change the way you think yeah and they can see what you see so how do you say no to that um so you have these things going on right these two things going on as in the days of noah Mm -hmm. and um all of this all of this is all relative okay in the sense that you take you take the very real possibility of an EMP to take us offline. Right. And then the uh, a savior comes along. Right. And this is not the Antichrist savior. Or, is it? Or, I don't know. Who knows, right? Who knows? So who knows? Um, <clears throat> but someone's going to come along and say, hey, I got this thing here. This 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 is a great system. So they so can put you guys use back online. This, this CRISPR nine thing, whether they use this Optiplex thing, they're they going to use them both together and say this is what you should do. We can get you back as online by or as Mark. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I guess from my perspective, it's be prepared, right? And oh, it, we're not done. <laughs> we're not done. No, we're not done. done. Um, be prepared. Yes. But we're not done. So the thing is, is that, um, you know, when 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 it comes time and they boot us offline and then someone comes back and says, oh, but we can do this. You know, they're already trying to do the central banking system and digital currency. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a in March of a couple of years ago, there was that executive order. Remember, I showed you about Biden signed the executive order about we're just going to do research on. Digital currency. It's Correct. just research. Okay. Well, we all know that that doesn't actually mean what they say it means. Right. Um, there was something called Bitcoin that was big, and it kind of just subsided a little bit. But it's oh, still but it, there. it's still there, oh, and yeah. it's huge. Like, to mm-hmm. get any sort of Bitcoin, you have to have, like, thousands of dollars, I think, right? To, to earn the, the – like, you, you can buy quarters. You can buy halves of Bitcoins. For, like, $150,000? So what it is either right. So, and I'm not, I don't know anything about digital currency. I don't. I just know. I don't want to know anything about digital currency. Neither do I. But guess what? People do. They're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's going to get to a point where they're going to tell you that you can't buy or sell anything. Um, And like, if you like, cause, cause think about it, you guys, like if we were taken offline right now, what would you do? Right. What would you do? I mean, most people would lose their minds because they have no idea how to be self-sufficient, that unfortunately. Um, but the biggest thing is that if you know what the Bible says in the end times, in the end of days, if you know what the Bible says, if you read Daniel and you read Revelation and you can piece these two together, you'll know the timeline of what happens when. And if that's the case, right, and you belong to Jesus, if you say, yo, I belong to Jesus, is it going to be easy? No. No. Nope. No, it's not. But we might be out Are you here. you telling your listeners that end times of three right now, if there's anything they should read to try to understand what we're going through now is read Daniel and read Revelation? Sure. I've done that, and I still don't understand it. But... <laughs> Because don't think because you're going to don't think you can read Daniel. I, I have gotten a lot out of it. Yeah. We can have conversations about Revelation more than Daniel, and I'm like, it says this. So just please know if you go read Revelation, read Daniel, because Eric said so, that you're not going to know anything. But 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 as you continue to read that and you continue to immerse yourself in the Word, you start getting more signs and more confirmation of, hey, I think this is really what's going on. Well, it, it, because, it, it, it makes sense. So they're all relative. Yes. Um, so people who just read the New Testament, you're making a mistake. People who read just the Old Testament, you're making a mistake. Because she says, wait, hold on. In the Old Testament is the New Testament revealed, and in the New Testament is the Old Testament concealed. Or it could be backwards. <laughs> backwards it? You did. And backwards. So. But but you know what I'm saying. The New Testament the New Testament is in the Old Testament concealed. concealed and then the Old Testament is in the New Testament revealed. revealed. So if I said it backwards, you meant what I And mean. it is one book. Yes. 
an integrated message system. Right, right. and you said that in your previous podcast. Awesome. Right. Okay. So for any listeners, as we just talked about end times, Daniel and Revelation may be two where you may you get information. You can't understand one without the other. Right. And even when you read both, you still may not understand it because it's not like you can read it once and go, oh, I understand that. Well, you could read the whole Bible a hundred times and still get more stuff out of it. Correct. So no, yeah, and she said that more than once too. Yep. So please know that is true because I continue to read that. I look at her and I say something like, oh, you know what I learned? And she's like, what? And then she tries to be like, wow, that's so cool. So this is something that you've learned so long ago, right? So as I learn things that's new, you may, as listeners, if you don't know, may find something so cool that may be something that you want to know more about, just ask. Send an email. Send a text. And they have been, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Which is great. But um, but the thing is, is that the Bible also says that we need to not be freaking out. No. No, because it's already been written. We That's need right. to not be freaking out about no. this stuff, you guys. Um, If you... And, and, and this is only going to get more. This is only going to get more intense and more intense, like mm-hmm. a woman in labor. Right. She talked about that one of her last ones, right? Oh, yeah. Look to the stars for signs, not That's for Revelation answers. 12, right. Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah. All right. You're talking about astronomy and astrology, how they're different. Yeah. Because astronomy is there, and astrologers were something that was made up like, hey, guess what? I'm going to go read and interpret these stars. No, we're not. Well, they were around from the Magi. Well, we're not supposed to do that. Which is a whole crazy thing, too. The I don't know. So. All right. So, but, but the thing is, is that the Bible says, don't be, don't freak out. Okay. In fact, it says, be comforted, right? Paul says, be comforted by this stuff, because that means we're close. We're close. And, you know, then people get into the the pre-tribulation rapture versus the mid-tribulation rapture versus the post-tribulation rapture, which to me is impossible for many reasons. But that'll be another podcast. Even if at the worst case scenario, you, even if you have seven years sitting here, OK, and you're just like, we're like. You know, don't go, listen, don't go build a bunker, okay? Do not build a bunker. It's a waste of time and a waste of money. Don't do it. Now, in our 23 years together, has that been something we discussed? Absolutely. It sure has. Yeah. But as we learn more, mm-hmm. the answer is no. Because there's no need to hide. You don't need to hide. Like that. You don't need to be afraid. No. You know, is it scary? Sure. These are things that are crazy, mm-hmm. right? May you have to live, quote, unquote, underground? Sure. But it doesn't mean stay in a bunker and wait to just shrivel up. Right. Well, and that's where the whole, like, maybe, like, church thing comes into mm-hmm. play, right? But you have to be careful. Mm-hmm. In in the ancient days, uh, those churches were tiny. They were small. They were, you know, just a, a few people, okay? And you know what else? Mm. Remember, like, Jesus? You know, Jesus, he preached to... Thousands of people, right? Uh, yeah, many thousands. Right. But he had his 12, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but he had even a smaller crowd, remember? He had his few. Out of those 12. Yeah. Yeah. He had his few. And so when those, when those times come, because they're coming, we need to have a few. Yeah. You may have your larger group, but in that larger group, you have to have your few. That and you your trust. few may be... In, in our world, one, and I know that one does not define a few, but if we're taking the, the literal terms, like, you know, the 12 disciples was a group and there was a smaller few, our smaller few in this life may be one. I pray that hopefully we can have it more could, than one. It could I, be two or three. But yeah, but I think God, I think God gives you what you need. Yes. If you ask for it right. and you believe that he's going to do that right. for you, <clears throat> I believe that he'll give you what you need. And if what you need is five people, then he's going to give you five people. Correct. Um, but you, and out of those five, you may have two that are your few, right? And maybe all five are your few. Maybe all five. I don't are have that answer. I don't either. But my point is, is that just understand and know the times that we are living in, and also that if they call it a conspiracy theory, chances are it's not. Chances are it's probably true, and and we need to really understand that because my thoughts are on that because i you know again i don't know the definition of this is not rehearsed where you know conspiracy theory they want to put a label on people oh yeah who are finding out the truth and go no it's just a conspiracy yeah don't theory. do it it's a, con- it's so a conspiracy so one more time for our friends chad and sherry go tech investigate earth 
It's a great podcast. It's Most a of lot the people of who are watching this are probably already. You probably already yeah. touched it, Sherry. But hey, either way, we love you. For sure. Uh-huh. Um, so don't freak out. No. And just, you know, but, but he doesn't want us to be stupid. God doesn't want us to be stupid, right? He doesn't want us to be slack, right? So prepare a little bit. Mm-hmm. He wants us to prepare a little bit. But he doesn't want us to be afraid. Because if we're afraid, what is what is that? Fears of, of the, the devil. devil. Fears mm-hmm. of the devil. God did not appoint us a spirit of fear. He said, be bold and speak truth. And, you know, right. be all right. So now I get to put you on the spot. Oh, boy. Yeah, this I'm in charge. You're not, you are in charge. There, she is, she's absolutely in charge. So now, I'm how, do we, how do we take what we just told the audience well, we're and kind talking. of wrap it up in a nice little... No, I know. we're talking. We're just having a conversation. We are. But how do we take the topics today? Because there were a couple of topics, right? We started with Rob and talking about church and how that is. And then we talked about how, what's happening in the world today, right? During the end times. How we didn't talk this? about the return of the gods yet. That's for another live show. Is um, it? Maybe. Is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So how do we take what we talked about today and kind of wrap it up for our audience? Well, I was say, doing that. <laughs> I'll just sit here and, and nod my head and let this beautiful woman talk. Go ahead. No, I, I'm teasing. I just wanted to give you a hard time. It's your show. You get to wrap this up. What are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do when it hits, honey? Do you think it's going to hit? Do you think it's going to happen? Do you think we're, an EMP is going to happen? Uh, I, I do think that something similar to an EMP, whether it be a full grid thing, whether it takes out certain parts of it, I do think so. I think it's part of their control theory is to take Right, because how systems. then? How whether then, it's full, whether it's partial, whether it's internet, whether I, I don't know the answer to that, but I do think that whether it's a test from their part or whether it's a full-blown, let's just take it all away, they want to see how we're going to react and what they can do to get their agenda pushed forward. Okay. So I don't know the answer. I have to say this. When COVID hit, my husband said to me, who, by the way, I am very, I am, I am like. I'll smile in advance. No, I feel very, um, because no masks, you know, no tests, not a single test. No, not a single test. And. All of that. Um, I'm not saying that anybody that did is bad yep. or anything like that. That's but, a choice. But my husband said, and he would go through the grocery store like, he said, right at the very beginning, he goes, uh, it's just a social experiment. And I was like, babe, crazy, crazy, crazy happening. Mm-hmm. And he goes, this is just to create division. Remember? Yep, it was to create a distraction. And, and a distraction to and to divide. And right? he was so the, the devil's here to divide, right? That's his whole thing is to take us away from our Savior, right? So with COVID, it was like, well, some people will say you must get it. Some say not, right? It took mm-hmm. families and divided families on, mm-hmm. well, you must, right? Because fear. It put fear into the people who said, I got to get this, right? And then as each new strain came out, so you got new shots and new boosters, it divided different People, so even like-minded people were getting divided on. Well, one, you should get the booster. Well, no, I'm good. Well, no, now. So people that got the shot were fighting over. Did you get the booster? Mm-hmm. And we're like, no, I think I'm good. Well, no, you have to get it because X, Y, and Z. So it took the divided and divided them again, right? Do because you know- that's his goal is to divide to the point where he goes. I think there's enough division for him to take a stand. Absolutely. And that's finally what I think. God's like, all right, son, you can go show him. Do but you anyway. know what Klaus Schwab said? I do not. Tell me what the he said. said. Okay, so he, he wrote a book called The Great Narrative. Now, you've heard about The Great Reset. Yes. Okay. So he wrote this book called The Great Narrative, and he said that uh, a good narrative beats the best data in influencing people, like... So I take out of that is a great story will be dead all day long. Exactly. Is what I take out exactly. of Exactly. Um, and he, he said... It's going to take too long. But that's what he said. He said, you know, that a good narrative will beat data hands down 
and that that you can manipulate people and influencing is the word that he used to influence people. And so we saw that happen, didn't we, mm-hmm. with the media? Well, um, that's happening again, obviously. And so now what they're doing is they're talking about EMPs and they're talking about all of these things. But here's the thing. Like, I don't believe that they can implement the system that it would take for the beast economy. Okay, the beast uh, system. I don't think that they could implement that without something drastic happening. Right. There has to be some sort of disruptor. Failure. Them. Some right. sort of a complete right. yep. and utter uh, dismantling. Right. To get people to go, sure, I'll do this because I want what's missing back. Right. And here's the other thing. A lot of people want to talk about how, you know, like nuclear winters and nuclear fallout and stuff like this. And here's why I don't believe that we have to worry about that, you guys. Um, because when that system comes out to be basically the devil wants, the devil wants as many people to take the mark as possible. The devil wants as many people to fall into that delusion that, you know, we need him. Correct. And take us away to divide. Right. So I I don't see a nuclear really anything happening. Because there'd be no one to go towards the side of the devil. Just exactly. a complete wipeout. I mean the people who aren't saved would, would obviously have a have an issue. Right. Okay. But there's too many there's too many more there's too many people. Could be used as a scare tactic. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And so I'm I'm saying all of this, you guys, because there's too many people freaking out right now. And we really if if you are scared, then that's a really good indication that you need to you need to probably uh evaluate and, and check yourself on where you stand with Jesus. Yep, go to your Bible. You know, absolutely. Even if you don't have the answers in the Bible, just go, Hey God, I'm gonna pray and help lead me. Or or reach out to right. me. You right, know, you can go to End Times Now yes. with Bree at ProtonMail.com. Reach out to me, and I'm happy to, I'll pray with you. I will, you know, um, guide you the best that I can. If I don't have the answers, I'm going to go do what I to can to find up. them yep. for you. But if you are worried about this stuff, then then that's a really good indication that you need to probably evaluate where you are with Christ. And if you're unsure about why you can believe the Bible or why you can believe that Christ is a thing, then we need to have a conversation. I don't, I don't ever push anything. Uh, I'm going to give you what I have. And if you don't want to take it, then that's okay. I still love you. But, um, but like, I don't have any fears at all about death. Do you? No, no. not at all. Mm. It, like, If somebody were to say to me, you know, that they're going to kill me, we would put her head on the table and say, chop it. She was there, there, and you're done. Yeah. Say that one time. And this is horrible, you guys. I shouldn't have, but it's it was, quite morbid. It, it is morbid, but I mean, so. Like, it was her, her comeback to something was, oh, you want my hair? And she just, like, laid her head down and said, just, like, chop it off. Like, no. Oh. It was, it was if, if we figured out, like, Antichrist, you know, because the Bible says that the restrainer will be moved out of the way. Okay, we'll so, be taken out of the way, which is supposed to be the church. Okay, the Holy Spirit and the church. Holy Spirit will still be here, but in the church should be taken out of the way before the Antichrist is revealed. There's a whole lot of mishmash about all of this, and nobody really understands exactly I when, understand. when the rapture is going to be. No. But I said, you know, if, if that were the case, that would be mid-trib at that point, mid-tribulation. That I would just run out in the middle of the street and go, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. All right, so just take her head right there. And then they would just take me right there. Yep. So that way I wouldn't have to. She wouldn't have to suffer for those next three and a half. Because, yeah. It would be so bad. Right. And anyway, I'm going to excited as we wrap yeah. this up, guys. If you like this kind of episode, please let us know. Yeah, right? you can let me know. Send a message because this is our first time doing it. And obviously what she puts out on a, on a weekly basis is is truly research 
from what she gets, and it's the word that she receives to pass along to you, right? This is more of a freestyle, right? Some people may gravitate towards this and go, I have questions, and we'll talk about it. Because a lot of it is, she's not going to prep me. I'll be honest with you as we go to these. No. I will never be prepped. I promise you. It'll be, Eric, we're having one. Let's roll. And I'll give honest because what we've realized That's in our why I'm not gonna you. what our relationship is, a lot of people may think more like me who have not read the word the way she has and has still has a lot of questions. I ask her questions all the time, right? So when you hear this, you may have a similar question to what I'm asking and maybe the way I answer it, maybe the way you relate to it, right? Because you're like, I don't even know what she's talking about. I look at her and go, I don't know what she's talking about sometimes. It's in there, and I have to go back and do the research to try to understand what she's already done the research and understood to the best of her knowledge to pass along to all of you. So if you like this, please let us know. Yeah, we And what are the ways they can reach out to you? Well, I'll put it in the links. She'll put it in the links. This is is Eric's way of saying he's done. He's no, and I don't know because we're trying to keep it to like that hour so we can see how people Dude, like this is time this frame. right here is like <laughs> this is short. An hour short? Yes. I don't I don't do this in a whole lot of podcasts. I know. I'm not even listen to my podcast. No. I do listen to her podcast. <laughs> I do. Yes. So Anyways, no, but we are done. No. For yeah. the most part, we're done, yeah. I mean, there's other things to talk about, but it really just but I want to say this to... more because I like doing this as well. Okay. And I want to make sure our audience yeah. Like and if they do, we can we they try do. to do this. They should probably know a little bit about us. How long we've been together. We got married last week. Twenty three four years. <laughs> we've been together since two thousand. So it's been twenty three plus years. We got married last week. Don't lie to them. Not lie to them. Lying is a sin. I know. Not lying. No. We it's been twenty three years. Twenty three years. Wait, how long have we been married though? Because I don't remember. Since two thousand uh, sixteen. Two thousand seven. Sixteen years, coming up on seventeen. But together twenty three. I thought it was shorter. When's my birthday? On a day that ends in Y. That's true. It's true. Um. Okay. Good. So the bottom line is, what are we getting out of this? Right. Things are happening. Yes. They are crazy. Uh. I think the next one we need to do needs to be the Return of the Gods episode. Again, it will not be prepped, so... Not at all. Sure. Um, Jonathan Kahn wrote a book called Return of the Gods. And you guys, Jonathan Kahn's pretty pretty cool. Um, he's hard to listen to because he talks so fast. Because you and can, I talk fast, and he's got me. You do, fast. but he's got you beat. Oh, tons. Because he'll tons. say... They have to... They actually have to do a, like, subtitle transcribe underneath transcription. Trim. The same thing that closed caption would be on your television. Yes. They have to do that. Trim. Because he talks so fast because his brain is going a million miles a minute. But God gives him some really awesome things that you know they intertwine uh i i re-look these things up just to make sure what he's saying is 100 percent accurate mm-hmm. and trust but verify trust but verify ronald reagan thank you very much for that um and he's been on point for the most part uh, i think there was a couple times when he said it was june 26th and it was actually june 29th or whatever something stupid like that but um but he wrote this book called Return of the Gods, and and I know you guys have heard me talk about how we are parallel with Israel, ancient Israel. Mm-hmm. He's where I got this from, because we are, like, to the point where it's, 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 it's eerie. And so um, I think that that needs to be the next episode, because what's happening is we are actually seeing a spiritual uh, thing with the kids. I'll throw it out there too. If you guys have questions about things happening now, right? End times, end of days, whatever you want to classify it as and have questions about it, how it may relate to the Bible, let us know. Or even Old Testament. Anything. But I mean, I know that as you talk about it, end times now, like what may be happening in the world that how do you relate it to scripture? Not everything can be, right? That's impossible. But if you have questions, let us know. And if you want to hear us freestyle about No, I think that- everything is relative. I think it's all re- relatable. I can fi- I I literally feel like I can find I can find things in the Bible with anything. That's a challenge for you all. Without her thinking, it's a challenge. So give her some questions. 
I don't know if they can hear you. If you want to know what I said, reach out. Let us know. No. Yeah. So don't be afraid. No. Uh, just, you know, um, keep, keep your eyes focused on God. Um, and don't, you know, don't be afraid to, to ask questions, but, uh, but understand the time that we're in and we're close. We're close to the end. And every single thing that has happened in the Bible prophetically, like it's all come to pass. Um, I'm going to do an, uh, the next episode I'm going to do is probably going to be on uh, prophecies that Jesus couldn't have possibly uh, planned because he was a baby. And what the odds are of that happening. Um, and you've heard her talk about numbers in her previous podcast. That was the Hepatic Code, yep. which is amazing, isn't it? Numbers don't lie. I don't know how people can still sit there and, and mm-hmm. I know, I know, but some people do. And, uh, and there's a reason for that. What do you think that reason is? Because they, I don't know the answer. Because not gonna make something. they're too comfortable being where they are. They don't want to get out of that comfort zone. Could be. Which means then they don't grow, which means if you're not changing, you're dying. You're dying. And I'll throw out, hey, you know, Brie always leaves a verse of the day at the end. So I'll round it up with where we started with Rob. We're going to go verse of the day is Hebrews 10, 25, no, right? No, no. Why can't I do that? No, no. That wasn't what I was going to do. Here we go. How about this? So this is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. Ooh, but they have to look it up. That's why I just said. I that's didn't read usually, it. That's usually the I know, thing. I know. Um, yeah. You guys, this, don't you think, Eric? Look. Read it. So how about we do 1025 and Hebrews 1037 through 1039. We got a double verse of the day. You got a double verse of the day. There we go. Um, but they already know what 1025 is because we gave it to them at the beginning. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So we have to go back day, to the Yes. Your verse of the day is perfect for what we just talked about. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37 through verse 39. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. So thanks, you guys. I just read it. I agree. Yeah. Yep. I think so too. That's perfect. Yep. Um, see, God's cool like that. Yep. He works like that. So thanks again, you guys, for uh, hanging out with us and um, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think, and we are we are so grateful that you guys have supported us mm-hmm. up to this point. All the encouraging words that I've gotten, I need it. Because I question often whether I'm doing the right thing or not, hence right now, um, and just keep spreading the word yep. so that other people aren't afraid either. Have a blessed day. No, that's not how it goes. Yeah. How does it go? Well, there's usually like an exit music that goes. <laughs> no, there's no music. I love you. It's, it's, this is Brianna signing off. You're Brianna. So sign up. Saying, God bless.